This is a video of effective connectivity inside of NeuroGuide. The, there, in the neuroscience literature, there are three forms of connectivity. One is structural, like with an MRI or a CT scan. The other is functional connectivity that has to do with the magnitude of coupling between groups of neurons, for example, Robin areas and networks of the brain. And the third type of connectivity is referred to as effective connectivity which gives you the direction and magnitude of information flow. Uh, there's a couple different ways, several different ways to calculate uh, effective connectivity. One is the Granger causality method, which has been uh, shown not to be valid in many circumstances and to be quite un inaccurate. And instead, uh, a good one that is easier to implement and uh, is uh, very reliable is referred to as the phase slope index. It's really based upon the imaginary part of coherency in which uh, when there's volume conduction, there will be no net information flow. And in fact, here's a picture from NeuroGuide that I will be showing other examples of in which uh, the information flow in a patient that has damage to the uh, right parietal lobe is shown. And this is a demo patient where Green means essentially volume conduction, that is, there's no net information flow. In this case, the left frontal lobes, FP1, which are healthy and have not been damaged, have information flow to these areas, for example, F7, F3, FZ, FP2, F4, F8, T3, T, C3, and CZ, but no net flow to the areas that were damaged, which are in P4 and the C4 region. There are two, the left uh, parietal lobe and posterior temporal region. The higher frequencies are fairly normal in this patient, although there is some net flow here in the alpha region, in which in this case the uh, PZ electrode has a net flow to the uh, occipital uh, and uh, uh, posterior temporal on the right. Here, uh, P3 has a net flow of information uh, to T5 and O2. And uh, in this case with FP2, uh, it has a flow from uh, FP1 uh, or F7, uh, F7 and also from uh, T3. As you can see here, this is the complementary colors. F7 to FP2, T3 to FP2. So the, the blue tells you one direction, that is the receiver, and the sender is the red. And uh, similarly, information flow can be seen in these other frequency bands. Now, I want to show how I produce this uh, inside of NeuroGuide. First, we have the demo, which you can get to by clicking Help, Enter Demo Mode. And this is from Lexicorp with a patient with right parietal lobe damage. And uh, you import that data by clicking File, uh, Open, Lexicorp, and import the data. Uh, age 55, eyes closed. And you can see the right central has a much larger amplitude of theta here than the left central. Right parietal, larger than the left parietal. And the right occipital, larger than the left. Uh, this is clinically deviant from normal. And there's many examples of that throughout this record. Now, the way you begin this process is click Report and then set the color map settings. When you click Report Color Map Settings, go to Connectivity and select the Automatic Global Scaling. Do not use Fixed Scaling because then it will be fixed at plus or minus 100. You won't see the fine details. So we've selected Automatic Global Scaling. Then you go to Report, Report Selections, in this case, I have the phase slope index for both raw scores and Z scores. I'm going to uh, deselect the raw scores at the moment and compare coherence to the phase slope index. You'll be able to see that in the case of coherence, that's a measure of functional connectivity in which there is diminished uh, connect connectivity or reduced connectivity in the right parietal lobe. And we'll see the negative Z scores in the right parietal lobe in this patient because the patient has damage to the right parietal lobe. Uh, and one will see a di somewhat different picture from the uh, phase slope index in which the left hemisphere is compensatory. And we saw that in the previous 
image in, in where the left frontal lobe had information flow going to different uh, parts of the, of the scalp surface, those scalp locations, but did not flow to the right parietal lobe where uh, it, there was compromised uh, uh, neurons and damage to the cortex. So now I've selected the Z-scores, face lobe index, and coherence. I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to click Report, Generate Analyses. And we see here now delta coherence. And we're going to come down, and when we do, we'll see that there's <clears throat> reduced, there's two or three standard deviations, reduced connectivity in the right parietal lobe because of the damage. And in the theta band, where we were looking earlier at the traces, and you could see these uh, deviant dysregulation in the right parietal lobe, there's very low connectivity uh, for the central lobe with respect to other regions of the brain. The parietal lobe has low connectivity to the right frontal, FZ, uh, F3, uh, C3, CZ, P3, PZ, etc. And here you can see the right frontal lobe has high connectivity, or hyperconnectivity, uh, with P3 and T5 and T3. So T5 has hyperconnectivity to the frontal lobes, but this left hemisphere is the healthy part of the patient's brain. As we move to uh, other frequencies, we see that there's less deviation from normal, although there is hyperconnectivity, again, frontal lobe to the temporal lobes and the parietal lobes on the left as the right side is reduced connectivity and is not, uh, has not much functional connectivity to other parts of the brain. And next we're going to take a look at the phase slope index to see the kind of information the phase slope index provides as complementary to the uh, coherence. Let's take a look at the theta where there's the greatest deviation from normal. And what we see here is that the left frontal has information flow to the right frontal, as well as to the, this is FP1, to F3, FZ, T3, C3, CZ, P3, PZ. And, uh, and, and you can see that here. Here's F4, and there's F4 up here. Uh, F4 is the re uh, receiver of the information coming from FP1. In the case of P4, there's no information flowing uh, from uh, to uh, P4 uh, from these regions, the surrounding regions, because it has disconnection. Certainly no information flow from the frontal lobes to the parietal lobe, and there's no information flow or minimal information flow, in fact, three standard deviations, reduced information flow, coming from uh, C4, uh, PZ region, and even locally to itself, T6, very low connectivity as well from P4 because P4 is disconnected. You can see here at CZ has low information flow coming from the um, frontal regions, but information flow from the frontal regions to CZ is seen here. So information is flowing in this direction, uh, and this is not normal. This is outside of the normal range. This is three standard deviations, deviation in the um, direction and magnitude of information flow, which is, again, complementary to the coherence. So this is a demonstration of a phase slope index or effective connectivity. If we come down here, you can see the alpha is fairly normal, and you'll see that uh, z-scores are, are fairly normal at higher frequencies, including the uh, beta. The primary uh, uh, deviation from normal is in the theta band, and one at this point uh, can save these data by clicking File, Save as Bitmaps, and create a subfolder. Or one can also save the tab delimited data. So all of the numbers, both the raw and the z-scores, are available to be imported into statistical programs. So in any case, this is the phase slope index. And uh, it is an add-on to NeuroGuide. In the future, there will be a Loretta phase slope index, or effective connectivity is what we'll be looking at in terms of the magnitude and direction of information flow between all combinations of 88 Brodmann areas in networks of the brain. We'll be able to see that in the raw scores as well as the uh, comparisons to age, to age match normals with, uh, with, with Z-scores.